So welcome to Lasers, Dragons, and Keyboards. I'm Aaron. I'm Josh Hart. And I'm, I'm Jean Liberty Raby. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Liberty Hart. And Aaron, I have a tech thing. We don't have uh, the image up. There we go. Yeah, it is. It's, it's coming. Okay. <laughs> it's there now. Yay. <laughs> so today on the show, we have Jean Raby. Um, who is a longtime author of uh, everything from fantasy to urban fantasy uh, to mysteries. Uh, she writes with dogs wrapped around her feet, uh, which she likes because she gets to wear sandals or bedroom slippers to work and old comfortable clothes. Um, she writes mysteries and fantasies because life is too short to be limited to one genre. Uh, Jean is a recipient of the Faust Award, the Grandmaster Award of the International Associ Association of Media Tie-In Writers, and the Illinois Author Project Soon to Be Famous Award. Uh, she's been on the USA Today's bestseller list a few times. So, welcome, Jean. Hey. Hello. Ignore the barking. They saw something outside. It's probably oh. a squirrel. Get it, get it. Squirrel! Get it. <laughs> In our case, it's usually just a leaf that moves. So. Yep. So, uh, Dean also is a fan of dogs and has four of them. So, as we were discussing, which on occasion is four too many. Yeah. <laughs> so, welcome to the show, Gene. We're we're great. Uh, happy to have you here today. So, well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. So we'll just get launched right into uh, our questions. So uh, we always like to start off with what is your name, what is your quest, and what is your favorite color? My name is Jean Erlene Raby, sometimes J.E. Mooney for editing projects. Um, I once wrote under a dog's name when I wrote something really racy. And my quest is to write more books. All right. I think you're well on your way to that goal. I'm <laughs> uh, 50 some right now. Oh, wow. Oh, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm under a, a couple of pen names. Yeah. That was fun, too. So what is your latest project among the 50 or so? Hang on a second. Jolly. The smallest dog is the noisiest. Yep. My yeah. husband is off gaming today, so he can't keep them in the other room. Um, <laughs> my current project, what I'm working on right now, is a fantasy novel a sequel to my Goranth the Mighty book that I wrote with Craig Bartell. And this one I'm okay. just doing on my own. And it's set in the winter, so I'm suitably motivated. And then on the side, I'm outlining another Piper book. Nice. Yeah, I just read the first Piper book. That was really good. Thank you. Yeah. They got they got better after that. That was my, oh, okay. <laughs> my first foray into Midwestern mysteries. Nice. Is that a cozy mystery then? Um, I'll, when I took it to agents before I sold it to, to the first publisher, um, the agents called it um, an uncozy cozy. They said That's that it just was a good description too, of it, yeah. Yeah, they said it was too violent to be a cozy, and, mm -hmm. and yet it was a police procedural. And a couple of them said, I don't think I can market that because it's not a police procedural and it's not a cozy. It's it's like a combination. Okay. So I sold it to a publisher in Canada who huh. was quick to take it up. Yeah. And it was only going to be a one shot. I I was inspired. I was writing fantasy at the time, but I had this idea mm -hmm. just kept poking at me and I had to write the mystery. So I wrote the mystery. And then the book did so well to this publisher that she says, okay, now the next one, and you need to title it The Dead of Night. Um, it was originally titled The Christmas Card Killer, but 
I said that I had I had limited my sales ability on it by putting Christmas in the title. Yeah. yeah. So we changed it to the dead of winter, yeah. and then she said, "Now you got to do the dead of night." So I wrote the dead of night. Um, the publisher became really ill and closed, and so I I decided to self publish them because I didn't want to wait to the whole 18 months for somebody else to look at it and sit on their desk. Sure. And been doing really well. But uh, but that's how it started with just one book. I was going to write under a different name to differentiate my fantasy from my mystery because I had had another agent tell me I want to, I'd, I'd rep you for fantasy, but not mystery because you don't have a proven track record in mystery. Sure. And I said, like, well, okay. And Laura Resnick, a fellow author, told me don't write under a pen name, just use Jean Raby because I probably would pull my fantasy readers over, which apparently I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird to me that the industry focuses on, oh, there's this genre and this genre, and they're always separate. They do, yeah, they do. And to me, as a reader, and to all the other people, well, most other people I've talked to, oh yeah, I read in this genre and this genre and this genre. Mm. Yeah. If the world actually reads, you know, everything, well, I separate all that out. But yeah. Well, and it's been my experience on both sides of the pages i guess that people like that blend um whether it's you know one author that writes multiple genres or you know a book or a series that is multiple genres so yeah. and i put um i can't help myself i have a a gaming geek is one of my characters in my mystery books Woo-hoo! and and i had uh, collectible card games in a comic shop and mm-hmm. so I, I get the geek factor in the character is even called zeke the geek and <laughs> oh I, nice and, uh, and i can tell i got my fantasy readers in it because i will get emails about about zeke and his side exploits <laughs> I'm going to have to pick this up now because mystery is kind of where I cut my teeth. Oh, you'll like it, yeah. With uh, writing, and I kind of write hybrid sci-fi mysteries now, but I'm working on a cozy that has a heavy sci-fi influence. So, I I, Every genre has a mystery in it. mm -hmm. Yeah, they really do. Mm -hmm. I agree completely. So, Aaron? All right, next question is, do you have a favorite scene or a character? I, uh, I can't talk today. Ah, Josh just deleted the question. Do you have a favorite? From my current? Let me take this, from yeah. From the current one, do you have a favorite scene or character? So, from I got one you're two. On. This one, this one, this is my book that just came out. And um, I open it with a raging house fire. And my chief deputy trying to save all of his cats. Aww. And Aww. I have a writer's group. And we we meet a couple of times a month. And we read our chapters to get our results. And so I read my first chapter to my writer's group. And one of the members said I had her in tears. Aww. Because she was so terrified what I was going to do to the character and all these cats. You're sitting there going, so yes. I thought, <laughs> I thought, you know, that's that's cool. I got a good mm-hmm. chapter, you know. Yeah. And I used to cover fires when I was a news reporter, so I had a, a pretty good background in in how they worked. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to do that. And in my work in progress, of all things, my favorite scene is a big bar fight. Hmm. I don't typically say that that that's a favorite scene. It's like, oh, it's another bar fight. But, <laughs> but no, I, I I had fun with this one, and, and it was violent. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, always fun when you have something that's kind of out of the ordinary, though. It was an audition. 
It was an yeah. audition. The guy got the bar to fight to see who was left standing so he could hire them. Oh, interesting. Very That'll cool. work. <laughs> yeah. So Aaron Liberty and I uh, are all gamers. Um, and, you know, for, for D&D culture, or whatever, you know, you have your old players and then you have your we like the fight, you know? Yes. Um, but when it comes to authoring, it, it, it's fun to have the fight scenes that aren't typical. So I like that, you know? Thank you. Yeah. So, Jean, um, when you finish the draft, uh, what does your editing process look like? Do you just send it off to an editor? Um, what, what does that look like for you? Well. Um, because I have a writer's group mm -hmm. and we go through chapters, I catch a lot of, of things or they catch a lot of things and I fix them. Yeah. And I worked so many years as an editor. I, mm -hmm. I still edit books on the side. Um, so my manuscripts are pretty clean, mm -hmm. but I always hire an editor and a copy editor to go through my books before I publish them. Okay. I've seen too many self-published books just riddled with mistakes and mm -hmm. the authors have told me that they can't afford to pay for an editor. And I think, how can you not afford <laughs> yeah. to pay for an editor? You can find some reasonable priced editors out there with, with really good track records mm -hmm. because I want to put out stuff that's good. even. When I pull, um, I found typos in Michael Connolly's Harry Bosch books. Oh, this yeah. New York Times best-selling hardcover. I've I've uh, seen them in Nora Roberts books myself, so yeah. I understand. Those darn yeah. things slip through yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. My latest yeah, book. Yeah. My latest book. I had my writing group go through it. I had an editor go through it, and. Then somebody else go through it just again. All right, it's good. We'll put it out. And then my son was reading. He says, "Hey, you got a typo on the first page." I'm like, oh, how did it slip through all these people? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I think editing is a is a big deal. People want to buy a clean manuscript. I mean, if you're buying a book, yeah. you know, if you're buying a book, yeah. I don't hesitate to buy self-published books from authors I know who have track records. And you can tell, you can read the reviews on Amazon. And when the reviews on Amazon say loaded with typos, loaded with typos, I'm like, okay, not that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I have found that I have gotten emails from people that are either acquaintances or uh, friends after they've read my book and be like, oh, you have a typo here. Even my cousin has done it to me before. It's like, and, I, and I've had editors and copy editors, <laughs> proofreaders. And it's like, I have no idea how they made it through. So, yeah. Most of them don't well. read backwards. Yeah. I think a really good copy editor needs to read the book from the back. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Interesting. And you're I've focusing on the words. Yeah, you're focusing. That's just one of the things that I do. You focus on the words and not the sentence because your mind can see things that that your your mind will read a sentence for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and not notice the extra it, or not notice that there's a missing apostrophe. That's mm -hmm. a good tip. Yeah. But if you go from the back up and look at the words. You will have to keep that in mind. I'm an old dog. I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> I know what you're doing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's a tip we've never heard of before, and it's a great one. So, so in the uh, midst of editing and all that, uh, let's talk about what you do for marketing, um, especially considering you bounce between self-publishing and like traditional yeah traditional big house yeah um it's rough you know even 
traditional published authors have to self promote because it's a mm-hmm. it's a different game now um when when i was self when i was traditionally published i had to to promote myself in addition to what the company did it's um if you look at facebook preston and child are our big thriller mystery authors mm-hmm. you will see ads that they buy and put on facebook and that's not their publisher doing it so and, and a lot of authors have a presence on facebook because they can announce things about their books and that's advertising mm-hmm. so you can just you know, scroll through the feeds and see, here's my new book. And the nice thing is, it's not a platform that costs you. There are a bunch of platforms out there that help you that don't have a cost. Fussy Librarian, Mm -hmm. Goodreads. I have an issue with Goodreads. I should promote myself much better on Goodreads. But it, it seems so invasive to me because my email pops up with, see what your friends are reading. I'm like, isn't that their business? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good re- is what they're reading. Yeah, in my opinion, Goodreads was a lot better before Amazon bought them. But yeah, yeah. so I, I'm not a big fan of Goodreads, but I will. I I buy ads. I look and see um, where the best results are for for ads. Sometimes I will buy these these Kindle ads mm-hmm. that when they have those on specials. I've had BookBub ads. BookBub's is wonderful. It's very expensive, mm-hmm. but you get your money back, and you get a lot of exposure. Yeah, I do a newsletter. I try to get that out once a month. It has a ton of subscribers, and that's usually a a good way to to talk about the books that you've got out, what you're working on, what's next, and what you've been reading from other people that you recommend. Occasional recipe and pictures of my dogs. Yeah. So, what do you use uh, for your uh, newsletter? Because you know there's Substack and MailerLite, Mailchimp, etc. I use I use Mailchimp. Okay. And there's maybe better ones out there, but but when I started my newsletter a few years ago, I picked Mailchimp, and. And so I got all these names, and I don't know how I would transfer them to a new service. So, Mm -hmm. which is fair. So I just keep using Mailchimp, and they have all these templates. So I can like, oh, I want to try that one this time. (laughs) Yeah, I know they should all look the same, shouldn't they? But but I like. (laughs) It depends on who you ask. Yeah, I switch genres sometimes. Like, oh, that looks pretty. Let's try that one today. Well, and that's part of your marketing uh, or part of your, I don't know what you'd call it, persona or whatever. It's just like, I want to try this today, you yeah. know, both in writing and uh, mm-hmm. in a uh, newsletter. Yeah, uh, it's like it's like when I was wanting to write mysteries and um, a couple of agents that I met with said, well, are you going to also write fantasy? And I said, yeah, because I like writing fantasy. You know, maybe the occasional urban fantasy. I like that. I picked up an award for one of my urban fantasy books. And um, I like writing thrillers. I, I like writing westerns, but I'll do that as short stories. And military fiction, I've done that as short stories. And they told me, Jean, you got to stick to one genre. You know, if you stick to yeah. one genre, you'll do better. I said, but life is so short. I want to write all of these things. Mm-hmm. Why should I have to just write one thing? Yeah. And I can write exactly. all these things. Exactly. So, so uh, something I'm curious about is it seems like you've co-written quite a book, a few books uh, with other authors. Craig Martell, I know you mentioned. Um, He's great fun to work with. I, I'm friends with him on Facebook. I've never had the pleasure of meeting him in person, but he seems like an awesome guy. He is um, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So what's been your experience in working with all the different people that you've co-authored with? I mean, have you found that you have a system that works best or? I'm, I'm... I will occasionally work with somebody, but co-authoring with someone is often twice the work for half the pay. 
<laughs> Interesting. <I've> had, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's something Tim Zahn told me years ago, and and it proved me right. Uh, he proved me right. Sometimes in a co-author relationship, um, I find myself doing most of the work. Maybe that's because I write fast. Maybe that's because I I set deadlines and and hammer to it. Uh, Don Bingle was easy to work with. He writes a lot. I wrote the Love Hate Case Files with him. We picked up three awards for those. So that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, so Don was good to write with. Craig was great to write with. Mm -hmm. I wrote a shadow run book with John Helfers that wrote really fast. We traded chapters back and forth, and that was fun. But a lot of other projects I've had, I was frustrated with. So, yeah, Tim's on was right. It's often twice the work for half to pay. <laughs> oh, maybe you just need to work with your husband because Josh and I are writing <laughs> or working <laughs> on a co-written series together. So. My husband doesn't even read books. So that's <laughs> oh, not going to oh, no. Yeah, my ex-husband was like that. So I understand. <laughs> so. Yeah. He used to. Mm-hmm. But but he discovered computer gaming. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's still stories, kinda. Yeah. Yeah. I started gaming about what three years ago, I guess. So I understand. I don't write near as much as I used to, because, probably because of that. But also, my, my life has changed. first game was before you were born. <laughs> I played Dungeons and Dragons in 1975. Oh, you Whoa. were one of the early adopters. It was in a con suite at the very first Windy Con in downtown Chicago. Okay. Hmm. Also where I met Joe Haldeman. Okay. Okay. But I was in high school, teenager. My parents drove me and a friend up and dropped mm -hmm. me off at the hotel because we were he supported my science fiction habit. And they said, don't leave the hotel. <laughs> this is Chicago. You live in the hotel. We'll pick you up Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we didn't leave the hotel. And at night, the science fiction programming shut down. And there were all hmm. these people in the hall drinking beer and stuff. And, and I, was a good, I was a good kid, you know. I'm like, I'm too young. I can't drink. But I found a Dungeons and Dragons game on the floor in the con suite. And they taught me how to play. And it was with those little original pamphlets. Mm -hmm. I had great fun. And then when I went off to college, I, I looked for a DD and d group. Awesome. Yeah. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. That is neat. Yeah, I, so, we Josh actually just mentioned uh, what two three weeks ago D and D was celebrating their fiftieth anniversary. So, yeah, you were very early. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And your like some of your first books were Dragonlance novels, right? Yeah, my very first novel was Forgotten Realms, Red Man mm -hmm. Magic, and. Then I did a couple of pick a paths and they asked where I wanted to go next. And I said, I really love Dragonlance. And so mm -hmm. they gave me a shot over there. Had to right. audition. They had open calls. You know, you weren't just. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah I was wondering how just... you got into those. Yeah. That's... It took me three go arounds three open auditions before I could land a book. Oh. And, and I did it because I overheard some conversations from editors talking about submissions they received. And they were tired of, of, of books where they didn't hit all five senses in the first few mm. pages. So the next audition, I hit all five sen senses in two and a half pages, just to see if that would make a difference. 
-hmm. I set it in a place where they'd not had a book set before. One of my main characters was a centaur that hadn't been used before. I just thought I would try to push, you know, see, try to push some buttons. I got called in and said they wanted me to rewrite Ooh. my sample chapters. So I did. And then they called me in again. They said, okay, we're going to give you this book. And by the way, you beat out Diane Duane. Oh, wow. And I'm like, holy <laughs> wow. shit. Holy shit. I, <laughs> because I was reading her. She wrote Star Trek books. And, oh, yeah, a lot and, of them, yeah. And other stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, The Young oh, Wizard my. series and yeah, yeah, a bunch of stuff, yeah. It was like, oh, my. So I was just like dancing. Mm -hmm. I would imagine, yeah. He said, is who's Diane Duane? That, never mind. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, now I have the D10 for random questions. It used to be a D6, but then we added some. <laughs> so what happens if you roll a 10, though? <laughs> we roll. <laughs> All right, so one of our new questions, uh, which three authors would you sit down uh, with for a monthly lunch? Oh, can I pick dead people? Okay. Sure. Yes. Okay. First on my list would be Gene Wolfe. Okay. You familiar with him? I've heard the name. A little bit. A little He's bit. like so big time. You should Google him. And then you should pick, out, pick up Shadow of the Torturer. Um, just incredible. I met him at a World Horror Con in Chicago. I had driven down from Wisconsin for the day. Him and Neil Gaiman were the guests of honor. And I wanted to, to meet Gene Wolfe. Um, I probably should have wanted to meet G Neil da Gaiman, who I ended up meeting and, and being friends with, too. But um, Gene Wolfe just so impressed me. So I went to his seminar. I'm probably telling you too much, right? I'm just blabbering. Yeah. I went no, to his seminar. And and he was doing a, a a writing workshop. And so he asked his audience, he said, I want to know where you guys stand in your in your writing career so I can tailor what I want to talk about. And he'd say, raise your hand if you've had anything published. And so everybody in the room had something published. And there were a lot of people in here, right? And then he said, raise your hand if you've had a book published. Well, there were like six people with hands up, and I was one of them. And he said, raise your hand if you've had more than one book published. And my hand was still up. He pointed at me, and he said, how many books have you had published? And I said, six. And, and then he pointed at me, and he said, you, get up here on the podium with me. I can't teach you anything. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I turned around and looked to see if I could just sneak out. He was crooking <laughs> his finger at me. Crooking his finger at me. So I ended up on this podium, this stage with Gene Wolfe. And I'm like, my knees are knocking. I'm thinking, this is the Gene Wolfe. Yeah. And so we had, a grand, we had a grand time up there. And we got to be friends ever since. Um, oh, that's cool. And so we regularly, every couple of weeks, got together at a Cracker Barrel for breakfast. And wow. Yeah. He would always order the Sunrise Sampler, and I would either get oatmeal or um, sourdough French toast, except on days when they had pecan pancakes with pecan syrup. Then we both got that, because Mr. Wolf was from Texas and was really big on pecans. So we would do that every couple of weeks until he died. Wow. So he's number one on my list. That was incredible. Um, number two would be Elizabeth Vaughn, one of my best friends. She's a fantasy romance author who I met at a Gen Con. And number three would be Joe Haldeman because he's fascinating and wonderful and talks like a poet. <laughs> hmm. cool. I have a great Joe Haldeman story if you got a minute. Sure. Sure. So Beth and I are at a World Fantasy Convention, and 
Joe Haldeman's with us and we're talking in the convention suite and just talking, having a good time. And Joe asks, what's, what's, what book is, is your favorite book? Something stick out at you. And, and I said, Fever Dream by George R. R. Martin. And, and I said, when I read that, I decided I wanted to write fiction for a living. And he said, Gene, when I read that, I decided I should quit. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we talked. So we ended up talking about how marvelous this, this book was that he missed his next panel. Um, but, <laughs> but it was fun and it was a good memory. So those are the three people I would go out to breakfast with. Nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Aaron, do you want to roll the next? Yeah, if Josh can roll for me, I don't happen to have a die handy at the moment. All right. Oh, we we just did that one. Okay. Reroll. There we go. What number we got? Uh, we have number nine. Number nine. What refills your creative well? Um, weeding. Because I really yeah. don't like to weed. I absolutely hate to pull weeds. It gives me no joy. And it certainly doesn't give the weeds any joy. And I realize with every weed that I pull that I should be writing. And okay. so so I go write. That makes that sense. That works. Yeah. That's a unique answer, but I understand. <laughs> so uh, so who is your captain? Ahab. That's an interesting answer. I don't think we've got that one before, have we? I don't think we have either. <laughs> what do you usually get? I mean, I think Captain Picard or Captain Kirk are pretty high on the list usually. Yeah, we've had them from all over, though. But... Oh, yeah, we have. We've had... Yeah. Mal Reynolds, we've had all kinds of answers, but yeah, that one's definitely not. I think that you're the first. So Ahab is, yeah, that's a fascinating answer. Um, a particular reason behind that one? Driven, okay. compulsive. Yeah. Yeah, driven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe unreasonably so, but but. <laughs> Oh, cool. So, what is <clears throat> what is up next for you? Well, I got to finish this Goranth book, and I'm at a I'm at a part of the book where I'm like, eh, you know, it's a journey. A lot of fantasy books have a journey in them, mm-hmm. so I'm going to make it a kind of short journey because. Too many journeys, right? So they got to climb a mountain. And I've been doing research on mountain climbing with medieval type equipment. And it's kind of interesting. And so then I have to figure in where to throw in some type of a beast. And I have giant goats. (laughs) Because I just think giant goats are cool, you know? Giant goats are cool. And, And if they run out of food, you can always kill one of the giant goats. And eat it. Um, so that's what I'm I'm struggling with. I'm like, oh, I gotta get him up the mountain. And all the cool stuff is gonna be inside the mountain, but I have to find a way to make the up the mountain. Wow. Yeah, they're you know, just a slug well. and yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yeah, they've had this big bar fight so that survivors can get hired to go up the mountain. And and so it's got to be, wow. You know, I just like want, wow, 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 through this book. So that's what I'm having with. And, and, and next up is, and at the same time, I'll outline my, my friggin' next Piper book. I figured where I'm going to put the body. Um, okay. Now I've got to figure out a title. I think mm-hmm. I'll do a newsletter and 
throw some suggestions out there and, and let my readers pick the title. It's a good way to do it. That'd be fun too, yeah. Yep, definitely a good idea. And she's going to go on, on her honeymoon finally. So <laughs> I haven't decided, you know, do I send them up to Door County, Wisconsin, which I'm familiar with, or do I send them to Portugal? I play board games online with this lady that I've become good friends with in Portugal. So I could send them to Portugal and she could tell me where they go. That's not a bad idea either. Mm -hmm. It would be very much so out of their element. And yeah. Yep. And it would be warm and there would be a beach yeah. and it would be like, <laughs> oh, there's a spy museum over there that would be fun. Yeah, well, there, there's beaches yeah, in I Wisconsin mean, too. <laughs> yeah, I don't live in the middle of Illinois. Freshwater, yeah, no sharks. The middle of Illinois, <laughs> and we had a big snow, six inches all over my yard. Ugh. My dogs don't want to go outside. Yeah, we yeah. got some of that yesterday. We got like a trace. <laughs> yeah, all the snow melted here, and then night before last, it snowed again. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Yep. So, uh, Jean, uh, where can we go to learn more about you and uh, all of the, your 50-plus uh, books? I'm on Facebook as Jean Raby. I'm, my webpage is jeanraby.com, and you can sign up for my newsletter off of my webpage. And my webpage has a blog. I need to do another blog, too, so you guys are reminding me of all the things <laughs> that I need to do. I often find that when we have our sessions, I get reminded of all yeah, the things I a, need to do, too. Making a little <laughs> checklist over here on yeah. the side. And like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to steal that one. And yeah. Yeah. Well, Jean, thank you so much for hanging out with us this mm -hmm. morning. It has been a delight having you today. So. I had fun. Yeah, yeah we did, it's too. Been, it's been wonderful. Yeah, so, Josh, who do we have up next and when? Uh, so coming up next is Laura Van Arendonk Ba. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and she's coming is up. She right? uh, fantasy. Uh, fantasy. Um, she's written some uh, Kitsune fantasy. In fact, um, has a new one coming out soon. I'm I'm excited for it. Yeah. And that is uh, March 9th is when she'll be on. So, And then after that, we will have... Who do we have after that? You're the secretary. I don't remember. Uh, Janine, <laughs> no, Morgan's too uh, determined yet. Uh, Janine Ippolito ah. uh, on uh, March 16th. She's got a fun um, urban fantasy coming out soon. Yep. So that's uh, that's who we have next. Um, Be sure to check our Facebook page for updates if something changes. But uh, yeah. yeah. Other than that, this is Lasers, Dragons, and Keyboards. Does anybody have any announcements they want to make? I buy my books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buy our books. <laughs> So buy buy everybody's uh, thanks books. For, <laughs> so. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thank you for being on. for yeah. hanging out with us, Jean. So we will catch everybody uh, in a couple of weeks. See everybody yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs>